in the streets of Toronto. Red hot flies were blowing up. Emails were crammed. And we're like, what's the heat? Captain Curly's mandolin. Oh gosh. I only read a few chapters, but this book is red hot. The there are many characters in this book, and they're just so exquisite. But I couldn't help but be infatuated with the doctor's daughter, Pelagai. In the beginning of this book, she was innocent and a well-rounded person. The girl that every man wanted and the woman that girls envied. In the first chapter, her father was trying to scold her for letting her pet goat eat his work, and she handled it with class. Ends the conversation by putting one hand on her hip, makes a sardonic face, and says, It's still your day. You ain't dead yet, are you? I was like, you go girl, being the political feminist I am. She's confident and modest. Sweet Pelagai. The perfect femme fatality. Every girl's weakness. A strong man with a handsome face and a welcoming personality. Huh? Love at first sight with Mantis. He makes her the happiest girl in the world and voluntarily leaves her for the war. Where life is concerned, Pelagai is realistic. She's the type of person who reflects on her decisions in life. Hmm. Self-reflection. You know, this is not the only time Pelagai partakes in self-reflection. Throughout this book, you see many examples of it. Being the partially independent woman she is, she knew she never needed a man to make her happy. She forgot about Mandris and made herself happy. Mandris returning from the war was the devil in disguise. She was loyal to him, despite his repulsive ways. The confident and modest woman became weary and passive. So angry and bitter, the innocence of Pelagai became hidden. 